2022. Welcome to The World According to Wikipedia, the podcast that explores the weird, wonderful and baffling world of Wikipedia, the people who write it and what makes them tick. With me, Fanula. And me, Rebecca. And in this episode, we are live at Wikimania 2022, which is very exciting. Um, so, yay. And we have a guest. Uh, we do, hey. we do. <laughs> Uh, Derek, do you want to introduce I am, yourself? I'm Derek O'Shea. Um, I, I run the Irish Forum Twitter account and I wrote the book Motherfucker Dispatches of Not So Dead Language. And I used to present the Motherfucker podcast on Headstuff Podcast Network uh, for former stablemates with, uh, with the world according to Wikimedia. So I'm very delighted to be here. And an old hand, I believe, at live streams when you had um, <laughs> Patreon and other things. So, yes. Uh, yeah, well, so. We, I, I'm not sure if I ever got completely used to it. I think you're, you're, you're still learning. It's one of those things that takes a moment to learn and a long, long time to master. So this is a little bit different from our usual podcast. We're going to mix up the format a little bit because we have Derek with us for the entire show um, rather than me going off and, you know, having a, a Zoom huddle with one Wikimedian of my choice. And then I deliver the interview back to Fanula. Not too long, not too short, yes. just right, like a Goldilocks interview. Um, yeah. So this is a little bit different. So we're, we're mixing it up. So if you have any questions uh, for Derek, some of you who attended Celtic Knot in 2020 might be familiar with um, him and his work already. Um, but equally, if you have any questions for us about the podcast or about podcasting in general, uh, do add them to the chat. I'm also keeping an eye on the Etherpad as well. And I'm attempting also to keep another eye, an additional eye on our time to make sure that we don't we don't rush ourselves or go too far over. Um yes. This is, as I said, our very first live episode. So a little bit of a, a learning curve uh, for both myself and Fanula, a little bit of experimentation, but we're very excited uh, to be part of Wikimania. And also, as we said, our, 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 our Irish Twitter celebrity, Derek, in the room as well. Um, so do, do you have your questions? You. Oh, yes. Well, it's your fault we have a podcast. So <laughs> you know, we have to make you work for it at some point. True. <laughs> yes, way back in the annals of time, Derek said to Rebecca, uh, you should do a podcast. And and then she wrote me in. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a dangerous conversation, though, when people just meet up and start suggesting podcast ideas to each other. And uh, when they, <laughs> it's a, yes. it opens a, opens a terrifying trap door. <laughs> but I did think, and, and I still, I, I'm still delighted to think so, uh, that I am... Um, I, I, I just thought that something, the idea of Wikipedia is so scalable in addition to having the, the community, community of Wikimedians around the world and people who are curious about getting into it and having having that as a first step for people want to try that as well as the fact that Wikipedia is ultimately about everything. I mean, is it, nothing is off topic in the conversation with Wikipedia, as we've seen. And um, Very true. So and yeah, Jan, our previous guest, Jan and Ali has just in the tech and the chat has said that he did a session earlier today about podcasting and he did a lightning talk specifically about podcasting in your own language as well. So mm -hmm. Wikipodden, uh, which is the podcast that he does. So it doesn't, you know, much like with Wikipedia, English does not have to dominate um, um, all times. And I'm delighted that I've been able to talk to lots of people with whom the projects that they engage with or the work that they do isn't mm -hmm. just about the English language. Um, yeah. And of course, you know, you've always had uh, an interest, Derek, in, in the Irish language. Yes, especially. Uh, so, and it was something, I mean, when I started doing a podcast about, about the Irish language, I mean, there was obviously, there's a, there's a wealth of broadcasting in Irish, and which is accessible for people with, with a high standard of Irish, which is, which is great. And there should be community radio for Irish speaking communities, as well as um, things for learners. But there's also, I guess I was aware of that, something like the Irish language touches so many things like technology, like law, like, um, like kind of, um, like liter literature and, and, and people's names, baby names. There's so many things that can be, so I thought that the, having Irish language as, a, as the central theme of a general interest show, it became like a keyhole to which you saw the world. And that's kind of shows I liked, like, um, like Reply All and 99% Invisible took a similar attitude to architecture or through technology. And they found it basically, you could do a podcast for everything. I mean, when your your central theme is a is a keyhole to which you can see the world, and that's that's yeah. how I took the the Irish language approach for Mother before. It did pretty well. I was very I was very happy with the the um the positive response and the very nice things it said. And uh, unfortunately, gave me the bad habit of telling other people they should definitely start their own podcasts. 
<laughs> but I, I will say from my point of view, because I'm not involved in Wikipedia, uh, I am a novice, uh, not even a novice. I think I've edited a few lists, like I've, I've, I've maybe put commas and things like that in. What I found very interesting about, about Wikipedia, uh, about this particular podcast, is I've learned so much about the world through, like, through the interviews that Rebecca is doing with people, with the, with the contributors to Wikipedia around the world, which I find particularly fascinating. Like there is every, every person that she's interviewed has been excellent. Um, yeah. Say hi. We're going to have a cameo. <laughs> hey, Lisa <Lassarine>, Rina. <laughs> <are you? laughs> okay, so they're gone. Right? Yes. <laughs> they're going back. Sorry about that. Apologies. For terrible interruption. Yes. But yeah, so um, and, I, and I've, I've just been I've been glued to World, world according, according to Wikipedia since it started. Uh, I just think it's, such a, it's a phenomenal idea. You've covered so many fa- fascinating things which I have never thought about. Wikipedia is the classic example of something that's worth, that people take for granted. People refer to it every day. And just just assume it's there and don't realize the amount of uh, of uh, worker bees going on background. Okay. And it's, it's fascinating to find out more about that. Like with parenting. Uh, exactly. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of frantic swan legs going on in, in the it background. Is. Um, yes. No it's problem okay. at all. Okay. We could, well, uh, so what we'll do. Yeah. Uh, two seconds. Hang on. <laughs> In okay. the meantime, we can discuss things. This is this is a, this is what live episodes are all about. Um, so yes, uh, from my point of view, like I've I've enjoyed uh, sort of speaking on from what Dark was saying, like things like the medical editing of Wikipedia, particularly around the early days of COVID nineteen, that was fascinating to me because it didn't even occur to me until we had the interview that there would be um, particular things that we needed that were needed care that needed to be taken over making sure that everything that's on wikipedia is correct and not prone to misinformation um so that was yeah i I learned so much and and i trust wikipedia a lot more to be honest with you now Mm. but i know exactly how much care and attention goes into it i think when you've added a few pages you realize how scrupulous the kind of volunteer run community actually is of uh, of making sure that there is no uh, misinformation. <laughs> so it's a, yeah, it's a, it, can, it can be a little disheartening when you kind of when you believe that yes, I believe it's correct thing. I refer to a source and that it's immediately shut down. But that's part of the experience, yeah. part of the fun. And I was just, I, I didn't consider this to be misinformation, but yes, I didn't, didn't realize the Irish Times is an unreliable source. But uh, <laughs> that's okay, opening okay. a it's a kind of sources. worms, yeah. That's yes. a kind of worms right there. Hmm. That's but interesting. Obviously, there are obviously some, to... some papers and stuff, and obviously, if there's you know, yes, something might be a respectable uh, publication, but the it might be an opinion column or something like that, or you know, and these, these are things you learn as you go along. Well, that's a very good, um, beautiful segue. And it's always good when you point out a segue, isn't it? Makes it even better. Yeah. Um, yeah. For We always have a, um, a, a section on our podcast about um, rules. And of course, most Wikipedians know, technically, there are no rules. We have our five pillars. Um, but we yes. have lots of guidelines and policies and writing guides and style guides and everything else. Um, and what I'd like to, if there's anybody in the chat that has a particular one that is their favourite, uh, one that they think is particularly obtuse or particularly funny or particularly useful, um, you know, I'm, one of my favourites is, is WP Not, which is, you know, what Wikipedia is not. And we've covered that before. So mm-hmm. it's not a new source. It's not a manual. It's not a, uh, it's not trying to be anything other than an encyclopedia. So if anybody wants to add one, please do. I did task poor old Derek, didn't have time to, to look up his favourite one. But I think that's an interesting one, like thinking about we think about those acronyms like the WP not and, and um, all those and GNG for, uh, kind of, you know, good notability guidelines and things like that. But there's nuance in all of them. Like they're not. And that's why there are guidelines and not strict rules, because mm-hmm. there's they're always open to interpretation and there's always a case to be made. So even if you have an opinion piece from the Irish Times, perhaps if you're writing about that particular person and their particular stance on something then if they have a Wikipedia article, perhaps it should be added. So yeah. there's always a little bit of wiggle room there. Have, have there been any other things? So you've started editing, I think. So yeah, past- I would have started editing some, some time back. And then initially I found that the that the actual app, the beta app on on the on Android phone is really good in terms of being as suggesting edits that requires uh, captions and photographs and tagging and things like that. And, and, and I found that was like an easy way of um, 
slightly more productive sense of, of being on the bus than maybe playing Angry Birds and stuff like that. And I <laughs> got a certain sense of satisfaction then after feeling yes, that maybe oh, I've made a thousand dollars or so, then if I could dip my toe into maybe uh, trying adding a paragraph to an article or something like that. And it would have gone from there. And I thought, yes, there's um there are certain gaps uh, in, in in certain things which I felt I had a reasonable knowledge of. Mm-hmm. And having a subscription to certain um certain newspapers and the Irish newspaper archive and the British newspaper archive, which I would use for in my research for my writing, I was in a position to actually look up things um which maybe had a uh, where were those gaps before where you might be able to find an actual an article from the time or some, or, or a, a reference maybe that was missing. I was able to add references where citations were needed and things like that. And yes, there was satisfaction before going on to actually doing something as drastic as starting my own article. And that, that was an adventure. And you know, things, people are supportive. People did leave little uh, bowl of strawberries and things like that in my um in as, as in my replies, which I wasn't expecting. I, I, I don't know the I was still learning the etiquette. Oh, don't template anyone. Don't template. Yes, I, 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 I was still learning the etiquette of kind of, of, of how we comedians um, refer to each other for, as compared to say social media or some, some other way but people um, how people do communicate online. So that was a learning experience too. There's a uh, kind of a culture of, th- of thanking people and acknowledging kind of and constructive criticism and things like that, which is wonderful. That is one of the like things that a... I. Oh, sorry, go just good. Like, what I, it was one of the things I really like about Wikipedia that I find out is that there are these little things that you give to people. You know, the the cute the cute side of Wikipedia, like as you said, the bowl of strawberries or things like that. You know, like the, mm-hmm. the that's nice. You know, acknowledgement. They're good. It has been shown that the, even the simple thank button. Mm-hmm. does encourage people to stick around because yeah. they a bit like you know i suppose having a, a, a twitter or, or a twitch stream or whatever it is that you feel perhaps very few people are paying attention to you actually somebody going and taking the time to say thank you for doing a particular thing especially if it's on a low you know kind of a low traffic article mm-hmm. so yeah. you know an irish backwater you know i've been surprised at the things that i've been thanked for um mm-hmm. over the years yeah, it does, and it's it's especially if, if it would could be possible without that kind of culture of uh, of niceness. I mean, I find the only time you interact with anybody would be somebody correcting or or reversing the kind of a change you made, and that would be very disheartening. So it's nice to actually get that you know somebody noticing that you're new and kind of suggesting things, and and then this, as well as the uh, of the with the Ireland project and things like that, seeing there's a, a list of stubs that just need to be fixed, and that somebody that's um. It's a great gateway in for someone who's not sure where to start. A good shout out to the the fellow um, editors of Wikipedia Ireland, the Wiki Project. Um, they're doing a huge amount of work. There's about three or four of them re-rating. All, they're going through all of the articles tagged mm-hmm. as being related to Ireland and they're re-rating them to make sure that that stub start C upwards is correct. We've had two really interesting um, suggestions in the chat. So from Jan, it was like a systematic bias is a good reminder and even uh, better on language versions strongly connected to one country. So yeah, that there are biases, you know, that appear in literature that, that are then mirrored. So yeah. a lot of the criticism that Wikipedia gets is it's not necessarily inherent to Wikipedia. It's reflecting the world back onto itself and to, to remind yeah. ourselves of that. So only so much fixing we can do with what mm. material we have but um yeah don't template anyone so it's that thing it's like the acronym thing of like barraging a brand new editor with a load of acronyms a load of templates a load mm. a load of basically um you know i suppose jargon mm. uh, for want of a better mm. word which is just off-putting yes. it's not friendly it's not welcoming that really it's that humanity piece that we've been talking about that's really important yeah mm. so good so it's uh yeah and i i think one of the when I first thought that there was that that there was a gap in the market for a, a Wikipedia related podcast, probably was when Claire Murray came onto the show. It was the first time one of what we've done a several a number of um, Wikipedia. We had done a number of Wikipedia adjacent uh, episodes, but that was uh, Claire's one about Wikipedia was the first one, yeah, and the, that was the controversial uh, and, V. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's our, our highly controversial V in, in the Irish language. It's, it's it's strange how all these kind of running gags turned up in the podcast and people kind of still kind of repeat them. But then they obviously, they, they filled a need between the letter V and PEG and things like that. We found um, it's because there's a, there's a whole world of onla- of offline people who don't realise that these things are a, are a part of um, Irish internet humour. But, but yes, the Vicar page was... Um, I think because I was doing a live show in London and Claire was going to be there and she basically said, you know, we should, you should definitely do an episode on this. And I hadn't really given Vicar Bade any thought 
up to that point and I didn't realize there was all this whole that there was, there was so much to it which I hadn't even considered before and the actual and the idea that yes Wikipedia is the first place people go for things and having an actual a corpus of Irish language content there is so important for people who are you know if, if you want to look up something about climate change in Irish you, you should be able to go to a climate change related page and on the page and it should be there and that's why it's so important that it's supported and it's, it's brought to attention that there are people who, I mean, for, for Irish speakers online who want to, uh, you know, yeah. help in a positive way. And that's something that anyone can do or anyone, anyone with, 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 the, with some Irish can do. And for context on that, at this point, when, when you had yes. that conversation with Claire, you'd written a book about mm-hmm. coming back to Irish. You'd started yeah. a podcast about, mm-hmm. I suppose, uh, you know, living through Irish or having access to Irish. And it was only then that you were like, hmm, online encyclopedia. That is that is also perhaps a useful exactly. thing. Yes, and it's, it's I mean, um, it's, it's something I suppose that I was surprised at how, um, I guess, I was surprised at how little, it, it, how it was, wasn't being as widely championed or um, not, not compared to, I suppose, there was, I mean, there's, there's a certain amount of Irish language publications and which are, and people, people do know each other to, to a bit, there's, a, there's only a few degrees of separation, but I just felt that there was, um, if if more people knew about this, more people participated in it, and um, I believe that maybe that there has been a little a little bump. I'm not sure that, how measurable these things are, but I'd like to think there's been a little bit of a bump. And it was great after that, um, a few months after that, maybe even a year or so, to have Gabriel Beach on. Yes. yes. So this is a plug for the archives of Mother Folklore. So for those who don't know, Gabriel Beecham, mm-hmm. he he was one of the founders, or. The, Gabriel Beecham, yes, of, 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 is arguably the founder of Wikipedia, and uh, yeah, and he did it like I mean, it's just amazing, ridiculously accomplished for um, <laughs> people, and li- like so many people who are, who are that that brilliant, he's um, enragingly modest about how, <laughs> how very good he is, how, how smart he is. The fact that for the crack he created, kind of um, the, the Irish language Wikipedia, uh, while he was like, like as a teenager in school, kind of waiting for his mom to come home or something. Uh, just messing around the computer and and that's basically and that's <laughs> it all emerged from there I think and so it's um and he's a doctor now as well so as, as everything else he's worked on the Irish language kind of content in Duolingo uh, as well as being um as well as fighting COVID and doing all those things so to show you uh remarkable man and it was it was great to be able to bring more people's attention to that that uh, I suppose that that it was that these some somebody starts these things. Yes, somebody takes the first step, and and we you know, all take it in the community can join in. Amazing things can happen. So it's um, I mean, it's because I think, we, and I suppose I was inevitably just going to compare Wikipedia to other minority languages, particularly European minority languages, to see if I mean, without without wanting to get into into try comparisons about which one's bigger or, or or things like that. But it was um, I thought that given how I mean, how I, in some ways, people like a lot of people in, in speaking other minority languages would consider Irish to be a role model in terms of how widely spoken it is, and in Ireland how well supported it is by the state. But then I still found there were some. I was surprised at, at which minority languages had larger kind of um, bodies of articles in Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. I think Breton was uh, in France was 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 much bigger than expected, considering that it would be. Um, it, it, I understand it feels quite imperiled, or the, the Russian speakers consider it to be in a, in a state of peril. I don't think there's any, um, I don't believe there's any compulsion to teach Breton at schools to the same extent there isn't, like an Irish or doesn't have that. Uh, so I, I thought, so it, was, it was interesting to see that, how, how something that compares. Mm-hmm. Of course, our interpreters, bless them, are coming up against the phenomena of Irish people talking very fast. And yeah. We apologize uh, for that yes. wholeheartedly. Um, it's one of the things that's happened to me at every single, I think, uh, international Wikimedia account uh, conference that I've attended is that it usually takes me about a day to hmm. slow down and stop using quite as many Irish um, idioms and turns of phrase that just tend to, for the yes. rest of the world, are a little bit baffling. So thank you so much for that reminder. I appreciate that. Um it's, it's interesting when you talk about, because one of the reasons that obviously we, we brought you in for, for the Celtic Knot conference in 2020 and, and the Breton community have been an active, um, uh, active contributors to that since mm-hmm. the beginning of it in, in Edinburgh in uh, 2017. Um, and you were reflecting kind of on perhaps kind of the, and you kind of alluded to it there, like the politics of language and, and how 
you know, some languages do definitely feel like they are, and it has happened all around the world where they have been actively suppressed or kind of benignly neglected probably in the in the nicer in the nicer ways um and that you know the power of wikipedia's for people who are active within those languages to kind of circumvent or you know kind of um mm. i suppose move away from the usual systems of power that meant that languages got got priority or got resources or or whatever it is and do you think that even in a context like ireland that mm. it's still very important to have that there yeah i think i mean it, it is and it is interesting how certain, I'm going to talk very slowly now. Um, it, it is, I suppose, certain minority languages are maybe adjacent to one very large language. And then often it, it, it seems sometimes that a minority language that's adjacent to two or more languages and maybe has a better chance of survival because it's not being pressed in the same direction. I think because you've got a Basque region of France and a Basque region of Spain, it, maybe it's, uh, it's not, the Basque language isn't as, um, it doesn't doesn't have a single kind of point of threat which is pushing it. Whereas, if you consider maybe because in uh, at the peril of the Irish language is that everyone who speaks Irish also speaks English, and if, if people are struggling with their Irish or if one person's Irish is better than the others, there's a the danger is they will fall in, back into English to speak English instead. Whereas mm-hmm. that may not necessarily be the case with certain other minority languages like the one in Luxembourg, Luxembourgish. And things like that, where you might find, see, it, it, it has it has the advantage of being something unifying, and you might find there's um there are certain certain languages which have that advantage, and then there are certain languages which have a relationship to the state, like the Flemish, and where uh, it, it, it maybe it, it gives where speakers have um it, where speaking the language gives you access to a certain um certain certain professionals. Uh, a friend of mine in Belgium was talking about how he recently applied for a mortgage in a Flemish bank and he doesn't know what he signed. Oh. They, did not, uh, they did not entertain his, his, uh, uh, his need to Requirement English. for English. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, I mean, it, he's in okay. a different country. There, there's true. no need, to, you know. And so yeah. Yeah, I suppose the idea, we were very far from having a, an all Irish language bank in Ireland. Yeah. And I think that would, it's interesting, it surprises some international people, because a lot of international people, when they think that Irish has, or Ireland has its own language, then of course, and that's the the lingua franca, and that's that's the the premise of a very famous film that a lot of Irish students now have to study, um, which is the premise of which is that, you know, somebody who wants to emigrate to Ireland learns Irish to then move here. And then discovers mm. that nobody actually speaks it uh, mm. until he bumps into somebody in in, in a uh, and, and I will find the link the Wikipedia article to the to the um, movie. We'll Yuming is Adam the, Dumb. Yuming is Adam Dumb. That's it. Which is my name is yeah. uh, Yuming, and he he discovers um, somebody. Some people will recognize some of the actors that then appear from a lot of yeah. Channel Four and other uh, and other items. Mm. Um, I was interested. I do in wonder was, though, actually, just to come in on that one, I do wonder if he'd have the same reaction now. Because there are a lot more people, particularly young people, speaking Irish out and about, if you know what I mean. It's not like when that film was made, there wasn't the kind of the the resurgence in the language, so to speak. But I do think that was at the cusp of it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, yeah, it's having TG Gower and, and uh, more Irish language broadcasting and those kind of resources and has meant that there, there, is, there is a resurgence now. If you think about um, for for young people who've grown up and have never known a world prior to TG Carr and uh, and mm. Radio Nilfa and those kinds of things, it's it, it was a very different learning Irish was a very different experience in the in the nineteen eighties and even the early nineties and and it it, it it is much more welcome now. Yes, I do believe if there was a you Ming too, um, uh, <laughs> was it um, yes. You fast, Ming furious, or or as, as some sort of you Ming sequel. Yes, he, they would find some Irish speakers. He would walk, stumble upon a pop of Gaelic, or mm-hmm. something along those lines. Yeah, or just unpack those. Yeah. yeah, for some. So TG Carr uh, is the so TG Four as it would would, would be uh, is the Irish language television um, 
channel here in Ireland, which was only launched in, in the 1990s by our cur- the man who is our current president. Um, mm-hmm. But there's also Radio Nilifa, which is um, a local Dublin radio station, which is kind of somewhat in contrast to Radio Nguéltaqsa, which is the state Irish language broadcaster, which is probably seen as a little bit more serious. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas Radio Nilifa has, you know, it's all about contemporary music and, and contemporary culture. So it's really about that kind of living through Irish. And what's yeah. nice, some of the new articles that I've seen created on Wikipedia have been around things like that. So around advocacy groups like Mishnok and um, talking about kind of the state of, of Irish kind of but in very contemporary terms, as opposed to this feeling of that you always have to write about the language in kind of very serious heritage historical type terms, um, which is, you know, all very worthy. And important. Um, mm-hmm. One thing that I was interested, Derek, when you were saying that you started, uh, you started kind of editing Wikipedia because you had, you know, you were researching and you were thinking about writing, writing your next book. Um, has editing Wikipedia and kind of that kind of workflow or that sort of state of mind changed how you approach writing? Has it has it made it easier, harder? <laughs> I think it's it's. I'd like to think it's kind of raised, uh, maybe uh, has made me conscious of my standards in some regards. And so if this isn't good enough for Wikipedia, why should I be writing anywhere else? <clears throat> yes, which is probably maybe no harm. I think it's, it's. I think it does, editing Wikipedia does give you a little discipline. You can, particularly with certain topics, the kind of stuff that I tend to find myself writing about, you get corrected quite very quickly, or it's, um, you get corrected very quickly if you dare, um, uh, edit something that hasn't been, you know, kind of uh, triple, triple supported by with with references and so forth. So I think it's in that sense. I'm not sure if it's changed the actual the nature of my text. I think uh, of the text itself, but it probably has made me very conscious of if I'm writing something factual, something nonfiction, to uh, to be more airtight in my reference. Interesting. I, I do notice that sometimes on Twitter, you kind of. Um, reveal a little bit about what you've been writing about, and it's it's things like when when pizza appeared in Ireland yes. for the first the time, and, and yeah. So I find sometimes I've, I've been very interested more recently. I think possibly ever since for people who for people who are unfamiliar with Irish Twitter, you the idea of something coddle, which is a um, <laughs> kind of a uh, broth uh, made with um, poached sausages. It's um, it's a traditional Dublin uh, um, recipe. What it's just it's I was fascinated by how in an age of kind of increased homogeneity uh, in so many things you know, with, with supermarkets and so forth, the idea that you can still have a regional dish and that's maintained a certain regional character in Ireland. And what, what does it reveal? Where does where does the, does the caudal line reveal where Dublin stops and starts? Is there It a, reveals there... that the Dubliners are wrong and bad and should be <laughs> like, you know, but yeah. For international listeners, it is it is a stew with with, with boiled sausages, boiled and pork sausages. Critically, the sausages are not browned, um, mm-hmm. so they are pale sausages. And this is this is the, the I think when you brown them, but it becomes like a, a cassoulet or something. That's um, but yes, the so um, I guess I've been reading more about Ireland's food history and Ireland's food heritage, like um, the serving the lasagna with coleslaw and the when, when pizzas were introduced and when these people stopped using um inverted commas around the word pizza uh it's it struck me as, as there is a story of um Ireland's food culture and when you actually look into it when you look into why um why pizza took long to adapt why um when you when you realize this that this, this tells a story about kind of european european integration but also about the introduction of frozen food and frid- houses having fridges and things like that and on all the suburban conveniences and how how late they happened in Ireland compared to the other other parts of the world i didn't know why we still refer to like those fancy fridge freezers as american fridges i didn't realize this was seen as one of the huge differences between Ireland and america was the the convenience of a fridge of a fridge freezer and that we and this was something that was seen as so highly American. This is why when uh, when delicatessen started and you could pick up some refrigerated food and that's why people put lasagna was next to the coleslaw and that's why people decided to serve them together. Yeah. And, this is, is, and this is the sort of thing that, that we all know doesn't appear necessarily on Wikipedia because it's that mm-hmm. kind of very um, intangible, I mean, to call it intangible heritage is probably overstating mm-hmm. it slightly, but yeah. it's the kind of thing that you you know yourself having lived in a particular culture or experienced something firsthand but it's not something that you necessarily find 
a citation wow. for. And it feels very trivial in comparison to say intangible heritage as it goes up, you know, as as pertains to large parts of the world. Yes. But at the same time, I was I was recently engaged in an edit war on the uh, crisp sandwich. Yes. Um, and uh, whether or not it's an American or a, a UK Ireland invention. So it's, it's not having a citation thing. I'm sorry. It, it's an Ireland It can thing. become very, you know, yeah. very kind of heated uh, because there is no definitive answer because it is soft and malleable in, in history. And that's why it, it was so important for to find that I actually found that social diarists in, in newspapers in the 70s actually get, gave some, they were their first people to they would they would notice something like a, you wouldn't get a news article about it. So a lasagna is now available in uh, in this shop in Dublin, but you might get like an ad in, and then maybe social diarists saying, oh yes, we were we had a lasagna in bird commas there recently. It was very nice. And um, and then and then so those, those kinds of uh, it, things after it happens, and this is it's linked in some ways to the Irish language and that people contesting why if a word really comes from Irish or if it's if it was added after the fact. And I did find then uh, um, there was a huge, there was a debate with the origin of the word crack, C-R-A-I-C, as it's spelt in Irish. Mm-hmm. And and there was a widespread view that this was invented in the early 90s to uh, to sell kind of um, Ireland as a fun destination instead of a, uh, a, 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 a intensely religious country. And that's, I mean, there, that may have been a motive, but if they were definitely existed prior to that. And... And then you find, yes, some people say, no, did, I never heard of it from 1990. Well, you, you didn't hear a lot of things, mate. <laughs> and it's just, again, yeah, anecdote does not equal data. Also, it's the other thing. side of that. And that's yeah. why I suppose it felt that it was it was great to actually, when you, when you go back and you look into these um, this, these food heritage things, because at what point you say, where where, where is a local area? Where, 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 does, where do blads start to stop exactly at, at the end, edge of Waterford or do his coddle mm. stop? There's, there's a, there is a house which is the last house to serve coddle in Dublin. That is the border between uh, rural Ireland and the city. I do feel very sorry for our interpreters with probably uninterpretable <laughs> words like coddle, blah, uh-huh. uh, not yeah. B-L-A-A, A-A. Um, yeah. and, and wow. a crisp sandwich, I, because obviously a crisp is not a crisp everywhere uh, in the world. It's Some place, a, it's a crisp chip. is not, and a chip, and a potato chip, doesn't it? But like, yeah. do people have, have potato chip sandwiches in America today? That That is a question that is, I would imagine, just as fraught as mm-hmm. the crisp sandwich yeah. uh, debate. Mm-hmm. But it's it's interesting, and that's one of the things where, I suppose that's the difference between our, a, mon- a minority or a small language Wikipedia, where to a certain extent, if we write the article on a crisp sandwich in Irish, we can kind of center it within that language and perhaps center it within yeah. that experience. But when you're talking about um, you're talking about the uh, the English language, then you're having to deal with the whole Anglophone world and then also the experiences of other languages as they manifest in yes. English then as well. Um, yeah, so trying to kind of marry the, there's got there's a there's I suppose there's a niceness to the kind of small community language Wikipedia that allows mm-hmm. for perhaps a little bit more kind of cohesion or something um, mm. around certain topics. And assume knowledge. I think we it's it's very hard to find the, the point of assume knowledge in an article. Uh, if you think that if you're going to write an article about um, John Charles McQuaid and how much assume knowledge about Irish Catholicism do you bring, mm. and how much do you just say, well, actually, you know, you could reasonably expect a um, a person who's never been to Ireland before to pick it up because if I was going to like, similarly just stumble upon an article about a, um, a a major kind of theological figure in another country and I would have no some knowledge I would like to think Wikipedia would be able to cater for me. That's a, that's a, some, that's a topic we've never and it's probably a massive one and mm-hmm. we might have to have you back on yeah. to talk about it. but mm-hmm. yeah assumed knowledge is yeah and and as Jan is saying like system systematic bias um, that if you're translating and I think this is a really interesting point for small language Wikipedias the the kind of the, the chasing of translating from a dominant language say like English or French um, or Portuguese or Spanish into another language Wikipedia can import all of those things in with it and I yeah I think it's something that the Wikipay community not that they just dis- not that they discourage translations but perhaps it's not seen as the most effective way to build an encyclopedia. I do sometimes from I, from my limited French and German from school. I sometimes look at how articles in Ireland and in, in 
articles about Irish related topics in those languages. And I think the the French uh, the French article on uh, on Cork has a lot of uh, a, um, kind of a pokes a lot of fun at the Munster rugby team and the Cork accents yeah. in ways which were which I wasn't expected to see. And they, you know, these things don't, don't get mentioned at all in German in the German article at Cork. But it's um, it is interesting because obviously I mean the the France Cork connection is going to will inevitably I mean Munster rugby is going to be always going to be a huge part of that. And whereas it wouldn't be that that wouldn't be the first thing for a German person to think of when they think of Cork or a Swedish person to think of when they think of Cork. That's really interesting. Do you have anything I wonder what the Wikipedia, uh, 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 sorry, the Wikipedia article on Thierry Henry might say. Um, <laughs> just, yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah, gonna check that name. That's, <laughs> yes, that's yeah. the theory on re in in Ireland is kind of our version of of, of don't mention the war. Uh, yeah. I think sometimes um, Irish football yes. players. We are we are coming up to time, yeah. um, and I wanted to just um, I don't I don't want to wind us up too quickly, but at the same time, don't want to get cut off unceremoniously. Mm-hmm. <laughs> As it, yes. as uh, as happens with these things, but I really wanted to thank you, Derek, so much for for all of your support over the years. Um, you have allowed me to be the curator of the Mother Folklore um uh, Twitter account over the years, which has a massive uh following. Um, and to tweet both myself and Claire have tweeted about Vicka Page and, and Wikipedia editing um over the years. So th- thank you very much for that. Was there anything kind of you wanted to to say to kind of conclude? <laughs> No, just to uh, congratulations on the continued success of the world of going to Wikipedia. I can't wait to get that stuff back in and I uh, can see what you have next. Cool. Fantastic. Do you want to take us out, Fanula? Yes, and that was The World According to Wikipedia. Join us again in two weeks. You can subscribe to us on your podcast player of choice. Follow us on Twitter at world underscore Wikipedia. Thanks to Patricia O'Flaherty for our artwork and Headstuff for production assistance. Go to headstuffpodcast.com for show notes, more information and to sh- support the Headstuff Plus network. And you can sign up there to become a supporter if you want to, you know, if you're listening and you feel that you want to support us more, you can go to headstuffplus.com and support us there or headstuffpodcast.com. Support us there. And if you've been intrigued by um, by some of the Irish culture that has been mentioned, there are plenty uh, of other podcasts on that network. One particular, um, and the name has fallen out of my head right now, but does it's all about food. It's all about Spice food bags. in Ireland. Spice bags. So yes, look up yeah. the phenomena of the spice bag uh, yeah. as well if we piqued your interest. But thank you so much for for joining us today. Really appreciate it. We know we're, we're a little bit kind of a little bit different in the Wikimania mm. setup this this year. But uh, thank you all for joining us and for all of your comments. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Sloan from Ireland. Sloan.